All right, welcome back to the not so climactic finale of The Road to Worlds. Now, The Road to Worlds didn't go to Worlds, unfortunately. Um, what happened was the way that the CPU had set up the qualification process for Worlds this year, there were multiple, multiple opportunities and avenues for people to qualify. <clears throat> And essentially I thought I had earned the spot at North Americans in August. I'd, I'd beat the total. I thought that was, that was pretty well set. Um, past that there was an Easterns, there was an Eastern Canadian Championships in December, I believe, where that was gonna be the last chance for anyone to qualify. Fast forward a little bit more and the CPU opened up another Westerns and another Centrals and another Easterns. And Westerns, I had, you know, tried to get all of the 120s who were vying for the world spot in one place. Um, and I, I didn't even specify Westerns. I just said, hey, if you're, if you're trying for the world spot, I want to compete against you. So I thought that everybody who wanted to compete for the world spot was going to be at that meet. Um, and, and maybe that was, to try to play to my advantage, which is lifting against people on the day, head to head. And um, at Easterns, two weeks later, Lucas Wiseman, a uh, lifter from out east, beat the total that I had set as the qualifying total by 500 grams and secured the official spot at the last chance to qualify for Worlds. So he will be going and representing Team Canada. And honestly, congrats to him. I don't want to take anything away from his performance. He did what he did completely inside of the rules that the CPU set out for qualification. And I, I wish him all the best in his training. I am sore and upset and sad and mad at the CPU for the way that the qualification process was handled, for the number of times the qualification process changed, and for ultimately the situation that I find myself in. It sucks, you know? It's, it's, it's already been changed <laughs> for next year. Uh, you know, the, the higher ups and the executives have obviously seen that this is wildly inefficient and nonsensical and have changed it back to where nationals will be before worlds again next year. And the qualification process will return to what it was where the winner of the category at nationals gets the spot. Unfortunately, the, the tumultuous path to worlds and the way that things wound up this year kind of left me in the lurch and it, it sucks. You know, I, I should have totaled more is what, what it comes down to, you know what I mean? So what's next is, I guess, the best or the, the next sort of question that comes up. And honestly, I'm not sure, you know, anybody who's followed along with this, this road to worlds knows that this was probably going to be my last road to worlds for a while. You know, this isn't a dramatic retirement uh, video by any means at all. Um, I'm not going anywhere, but what direction I'm going is, is less clear. Uh, I'm toying with the idea of maybe making North Americans in August the, the sort of like, you know, my, my last hurrah at 120, at least for now, anyways. Uh, again, anybody who's followed along knows that I'm not super happy living at this body weight. I feel like it restricts me from doing a lot of things outside of powerlifting that I want to do. Um, I think in the long run, living at this body weight is probably not the healthiest thing for me. And I'm getting to the age where I have to start to think about those things. Um, so the plan was, you know, go to Worlds, put up a big total, go out with a bang on my own terms and start the process of cutting down. And with things changing, yeah, it's, it's looking like it will probably be North Americans so that I can, you know, have some agency in my last little hurrah here and I think having the 
world's qualification go the way that it did. Really feels like if that's my last meet as a 120, you know, that's not really on my terms. That, that feels like it's without my own agency. So I think I do want to do one more meet at 120. I've bounced back from this competition better than I have any meet I've done in the last two plus years. I feel healthier in my training than I have for a long time. And I feel pretty damn motivated to, to you know, put it all out there. I feel like I left kilos on the platform at Westerns. I feel like I didn't peak as well as I could have. I feel like my bench didn't train as well as it could have. And I feel like my deadlift is finally starting to pick up some momentum again. So I think I could very reasonably go out there and hit a much bigger total. And I want to do that. And then begin the cut. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. This is, this is maybe a bit of a non un unconventional video and a bit more of just kind of a frank conversation with anybody who's been following along. You know, we hope you've enjoyed the ride, gotten some value out of it. Hopefully it's been some sort of, I don't know, inspiration is always such a kind of cheesy word, but I don't know. Hopefully it's like helped some of you with your own competitions and your own, you know, struggles and stuff. I sometimes get people who reach out and say that following along and me being very open and honest about how things are going helps them in some way. So I hope if that's you, you know, this has helped. So yeah, we'll be back to, you know, more vlogs. We've got some, what I think is going to be really important and, and impactful educational content that we're working really, really hard on. And I'm really excited about, but, uh, yeah, other than that, we're just going to keep being Calgary barbell. We're going to keep doing the thing and we'll see you in the next one.